All right, so let's dive straight into the fascinating world of British afternoon tea. Now, when you think of the Brits, one of the first things that might come to your mind is their love for a good cuppa, isn't it? <laughs> well, you're not wrong. The tradition of afternoon tea holds a special place in British culture, and it dates back to the early 1840s. It was introduced by Anna, the Duchess of Bedford, who would often feel peckish around four o'clock in the afternoon. At that time, the upper classes would typically only have two meals a day, breakfast and dinner. So Anna started having a pot of tea with some light snacks in her boudoir during the afternoon. Soon, this private ceremony became a fashionable social event among the high society of England. <clears throat> now let's talk about how it's done. Traditional British afternoon tea is a real treat. It's served on a three-tiered stand. On the bottom, you'll find a selection of finger sandwiches with classic fillings like cucumber, smoked salmon, and egg and cress. The middle tier is reserved for warm, freshly baked skulls, served with clotted cream and strawberry jam. And the top tier is for a range of sweet pastries and cakes. And of course, it all comes with a pot of tea. The choice of tea can vary, but a robust black tea like Darjeeling or Assam is often preferred. The tea is served in a bone china teapot and it's poured into delicate teacups. And remember, it's milk in after the tea, not before. That's a hotly debated topic among the Brits. <laughs> so the tradition of afternoon tea is not just about sipping a hot beverage. It's a delightful ritual that allows one to pause, relax, and savor the joy of the moment. It's about good company, delicious food, and of course, a fine blend of tea. Similar, it's a quintessential part of British culture, and it continues to be a charming tradition that's loved by many, not just in Britain, but across the globe. Now, wouldn't you just love to experience this delightful tradition? I know I would. But for now, let's journey on to our next destination, Japan. But we'll save that for our next discussion. All right. Now let's journey to the land of the rising sun, Japan. Specifically, we're going to delve into the serene world of the Japanese tea ceremony known as chanoyu or sado. <clears throat> Unlike the British afternoon tea, the Japanese tea ceremony is not about indulging in a variety of delicacies. Instead, it's a meditative practice that's deeply rooted in Zen Buddhism. It's a beautiful blend of art, spirituality, and the act of making and drinking matcha, a powdered green tea. The tea ceremony is not just about the tea itself, but the whole experience, the choreographed movements, the utensils, the tea room, and even the garden path leading to it. Every element is carefully considered and holds symbolic meaning. The host of the ceremony prepares the tea with grace and precision and serves it to the guests in a series of carefully choreographed steps. The participants watch in silence, appreciating the beauty of the moment and the effort put in by the host. It's a moment of tranquility, respect, and mindfulness, a stark contrast to our often hectic daily lives. <sighs> And let's talk about the tea. Matcha is the star of the show here. It's a finely ground powder, especially grown and processed green tea leaves. The tea is prepared using a bamboo whisk and served in a handcrafted bowl. The taste is quite unique with a creamy, rich, and slightly bitter flavor. Historically, the tea ceremony has been a tool to forge alliances among the elite and a way to practice Zen philosophy. Today, it continues to be a cherished tradition, symbolizing harmony, respect, purity, and tranquility. 
the four principles of the tea ceremony. So there you have it, folks. The Japanese tea ceremony isn't just about sipping tea. It's an immersive experience that invites you to step back, slow down, and appreciate the beauty of the present moment. A truly profound way of enjoying tea, don't you think? Uh, <laughs> but hold on to your teacups, because we're not done yet. Next, we're off to the vibrant land of Morocco. But that's a story for another time. Now, let's venture into the vibrant world of Moroccan mint tea. Known as Moroccan whiskey due to its importance in the Moroccan culture, this sweet minty beverage is the heart and soul of Moroccan hospitality. To prepare Moroccan mint tea, you'll need gunpowder green tea, fresh mint leaves, and lots of sugar. Yes, you heard that right. The Moroccans love their tea. Sweet. Really sweet. <laughs> the tea leaves are first rinsed with a small amount of boiling water, which is then discarded. More hot water is added along with a generous handful of fresh mint and sugar. The tea is then brought to a boil. But here's where the magic happens. The tea is poured from a height into small glasses, creating a frothy layer on top, a process they call pulling the tea. This not only cools down the tea, but also helps to mix the flavors. Now, serving Moroccan mint tea is an art in itself. It's traditionally served three times to a guest, each brew having a slightly different flavor, the first being strong and bitter, the second being more balanced, and the third being very sweet. And as the saying goes, the first glass is as gentle as life, the second is as strong as love, the third is as bitter as death. Quite poetic, isn't it? In Morocco, tea is more than just a drink. Tea is a sign of hospitality, friendship, and tradition. It's served throughout the day, especially to guests. And it's also a common sight in Moroccan bazaars, where deals are often sealed over a glass of mint tea. So, the tradition of Moroccan mint tea is a delightful blend of taste, aroma, and ritual. It's a symbol of Moroccan culture, and its preparation and consumption is a ceremony that brings people together. In the end, it's not just about the tea, but the shared experience and the sense of community it fosters. From the bustling bazaars of Morocco, we'll next journey into an overview of diverse tea cultures around the globe. But we'll save that for another talk. Mm. All right, now that we've had a sip of tea from Britain, Japan, and Morocco, let's broaden our horizon and explore how the culture of tea varies across the globe. It's truly fascinating to see how this simple beverage has been embraced and transformed by different cultures, reflecting their unique histories, traditions, and societal norms. Let's start with China, the birthplace of tea. Here, tea is more than just a drink. It's an integral part of their culture, history, and philosophy. The Chinese tea ceremony, known as Gong Fu Cha, is a time-honored tradition that emphasizes the art of tea preparation and the enjoyment of its taste. It's a slow-paced, meticulous ceremony that encourages mindfulness. Ah. Now let's hop over to India, another tea-loving nation. Here, tea, or chai, as it's commonly known, is a way of life. The Indian chai is a robust blend of strong black tea, milk, sugar, and a medley of spices, like cardamom, ginger, and cloves. It's commonly enjoyed in chai wallas, or tea stalls, that dot the streets of India bringing people from all walks of life together. In Russia, we have the samovar, a large urn used to boil water and brew tea. Tea is typically served strong and sweet 
often accompanied by jam or honey and a slice of lemon. It's a symbol of hospitality and is enjoyed throughout the day. And then there are countries like Argentina where yerba mate, a type of herbal tea, is enjoyed. It's a social drink shared among friends and family using a hollowed gourd and a metal straw. These are just a few examples, but they illustrate how tea cultures can vary greatly from one place to another. Each one tells a story about the people, their history, their societal values, and their way of life. It goes to show that tea is not just a beverage, but a medium that brings people together, fostering a sense of community and shared experiences. <laughs> in our next discussion, we'll delve deeper into the types and qualities of teas used in various global tea cultures. But for now, let's take a moment to appreciate the rich tapestry of tea cultures that exist around the world. It's quite a brew, isn't it? <laughs> now, let's delve into the world of tea itself. The type and quality of tea used can significantly impact the overall tea experience and is a reflection of the unique tea cultures around the world. Tea, despite its many forms, comes from a single plant species, Camellia sinensis. But it's the process and method that gives us the different types of tea. Green, black, white, oolong, and purr. Each has its distinct flavor profile and is used in different tea cultures, depending on local preferences and traditions. In Britain, black teas like Assam or Darjeeling are popular. These robust teas stand up well to milk and sugar, which is a common way the Brits enjoy their tea. Japan, on the other hand, is all about green tea, with matcha being the centerpiece of the traditional Japanese tea ceremony. Matcha is a powdered green tea known for its vibrant color and rich, creamy texture. It's prepared with a bamboo whisk and served in a handcrafted bowl. Morocco prefers Chinese gunpowder green tea for their Moroccan mint tea. The tightly rolled leaves unfurl as they steep, releasing their flavor gradually. This tea is then heavily sweetened and mixed with fresh mint for a refreshing concoction. India's chai culture leans towards strong, malty Assam tea. This robust tea acts as a perfect base for the rich, spicy, and milky concoction that is the Indian masala chai. And let's not forget about herbal teas, which are quite popular in many cultures. For instance, Argentina's national drink, yerba mate, is an herbal tea made from the leaves and twigs of the Ilex paraguariensis plant. The quality of the tea leaves also plays a crucial role. Factors such as the tea's origin, the time of harvest, and the part of the plant used can greatly affect the taste of the tea. In essence, the types and qualities of teas used in various global tea cultures not only impact the overall tea experience, but also tell a story about the region's preferences, traditions, and even their interactions with other cultures. So the next time you sip a cup of tea, remember, you're not just tasting a beverage, but also experiencing a piece of culture, history, and tradition. Quite fascinating, isn't it? <laughs> That's the beauty of the world of tea. But for now, it's time for us to put down our teacups. Until our next tea adventure, cheers. Mm -hmm.